control the relevant companies. But the probes are rattling overseas business lobbies in China. The EU's Chamber of Commerce in China said the crackdowns send a worrying signal and heighten the uncertainty felt by foreign companies. While the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai called on authorities to more clearly delineate the permissible areas of due diligence. In France, parents' groups have concerns about the company's operations in China. Around 10 activists shouted accusations at the company's CEO, accusing Volkswagen vehicles of being manufactured using forced labor. Their banners read, End Uyghur Forced Labor. The United Nations has raised alarms about China's treatment of Uyghurs in Xinjiang, known locally as East Turkestan, suggesting that it may constitute crimes against humanity. Beijing has consistently denied this. Investors also called on Volkswagen to request an independent audit of its plant in Xinjiang. The plant is jointly owned with Chinese state-owned company SAIC. Ralph Brunstetter, Volkswagen's China chief, defended the company's position, saying, quote, we do not see any evidence of human rights abuses at the plant. Tensions reached a boiling point when an unidentified activist threw a cake at a shareholder, causing commotion near the stage. Volkswagen Supervisory Board Chairman had been speaking on the stage at the time. China could be on the brink of losing a major player in Europe. Italy says it's way whether to leave China's global infrastructure initiative, known as the Belt and Road. Italy caused a stir back in 2019. That's when it became the only G7 nation to sign on to the investment pact. The G7 includes the world's seven wealthiest nations. But now, the nation seems to be having second thoughts. Italy's prime minister recently told House Speaker Kevin McCarthy that her government is in favor of exiting the deal. As a member of the Belt and Road, Italy has been called a middle power bridge used by Beijing and Moscow. That's because Italy is part of three major alliances in the Western world, NATO, the European Union, and the G7. In 2021, the European Central Bank's former governor froze the Belt and Road Agreement when he took power in Rome. And now, with the country's new government, geopolitics has entered the spotlight. The former governor had signaled support for Taiwan, which communist China sees as its own territory. That's despite the Chinese Communist Party never having ruled the island. But deepening economic ties with Beijing, such as the Belt and Road, would put that promise in jeopardy. Italy has until the end of the year to decide whether to renew the Belt and Road deal. While the world... And on that note, it seems in terms of just solar panels themselves, the whole argument there is, oh, the U.S. needs them to fulfill its goals of renewable energy and meet all these different goals in terms of climate change. What is your comment on that? Well, there's not, it's not going to be beneficial to the United States or any country if they are, you know, if we're talking about uh, we want to engage in climate change uh, cooperation with China. How can we cooperate with a country that's engaging in genocide, that's engaging in mass human rights violations and atrocities across the board against all of its, uh, of its people, let alone the people of East Turkestan or Tibet or the Falun Gong? Um, so these are uh, completely unacceptable, I think, and I think that the United States government needs to make it clear that, you know, we're not going to cooperate with you on anything unless you address these issues first. Human rights should be a priority, or else how are we going to benefit from the solar panels uh, that are made with slave labor um, when, if anything, we have, will have been contributing to that slave labor? Um, let's switch the roles around for a second, hypothetically. Would we as Americans, you know, would, would we as Americans, if we are Americans being forced to, you know, you make these slave labor products, to make these solar panels, would we be happy if some country across the world was, you know, saying, oh, we're going to be tough on human rights, but, you know, we're going to continue and accept this uh, uh, slave labor that was produced by American slave labor, a uh, uh, solar panel that was produced by American slave labor, even though we're going to, we claim to be tough on human rights. Prime Minister, with all the areas covered today, phones outside the state network, it will, of course, be possible to use the app. Back in the U.S., Montana is taking it a step further, passing a new bill that would block the app from personal devices as well. The measure is called SB 419. It cites many of the same concerns echoing worldwide. 
espionage, influence, and data theft from the Chinese communist regime, plus dangerous, sometimes even lethal trends circulating among the app's younger audience. The measure would criminalize offering the software for download on app stores, enforced by an up to $10,000 fine on companies found to offer it. The rule would not make using TikTok illegal for those who already have it, nor would individual users face fines. Governor Greg Gianforte is expected to sign it. If he does, it could take effect in January. TikTok by the Justice Department, one that Republicans have criticized for moving too slowly. So one might assume that House Republicans who have been investigating the business dealings of the Biden family would want an indictment to come in short order. But today on Sunday Morning Futures, House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer said that the DOJ should wait until after Wednesday when Congressman Comer says a press conference will take place to show new evidence that the committee has gathered. My message to the Department of Justice is very loud and clear. Do not indict Hunter Biden before Wednesday when you have the opportunity to see the evidence that the House Oversight Committee will produce with respect to the web of LLCs, with respect to the number of adversarial countries that this family influence peddled in. This is not just about the president's son. Last week, the president came to his son's defense when asked how a potential indictment would impact his presidency. First of all, my son's done nothing wrong. I trust him. I have faith in him. And it impacts my presidency by making me feel proud of him. Democrats argue that an indictment of the president's son may not weigh heavily on the president's re-election campaign, given that former president and once again candidate Donald Trump has himself been indicted. This is what Hunter Biden has come down to now. He is a distraction, a shield against all the trouble that Trump is, is experiencing. And Axios is reporting that top aides to the president are clashing with Hunter Biden's team. That's over a plan to create a legal defense fund. In Washington, Alexandra Hoff, Fox News. City advisor and the head of the CIA all have very questionable ties to China. And Didi, with this elite capture, it sounds like that's impacting, say, the policies that are being implemented, maybe even the very way of Americans' life. What you mentioned earlier, also prosecuting the Chinese regime over this, how would that work? Well, it's uh, very concerning that even this week, the Biden administration has made clear that they see China as the uh, strategic competitor to the United States. Competitor, competition, these are not the words. The CCP is the greatest existential threat America has ever faced, even greater than that of the Soviet Union during the high point of the Cold War. Uh, you know, we stood up the uh, Committee on the Present Danger China uh, modeled after a Reagan-esque effort in the 1970s called the Committee on the Present Danger to address the dangers from the Soviet Union. Reagan was a member of that committee, and he received a mandate from the American people to, uh, you know, go go win the war against Russia or Soviet Union. We are now in that same um, threat set, uh, section where the... Um, the Chinese Communist Party represents our greatest enemy. They are at war with us. And the United States is behind the curve in recognizing how far advanced this war truly is. It hasn't gone kinetic yet, but China is very eager to do that and is building up towards it. It does sound like that indeed. And Didi, you mentioned too with, say, these crimes against humanity, with, it, with holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable, how do we differentiate between the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese people? So the Chinese Communist Party, as we put forth in this book, is a transnational criminal organization, and they should be designated by Congress as such. At that point in time, real, you know, charges can be brought against the Chinese Communist Party, and the world can begin to hold them to account for their crimes. So that's, we, you know, the, if we... If we recognize the crimes that they have committed, not only against their own people, but against the people of the United States, uh, with their bioweapons, COVID-19, the leak from the lab, um, hiding all of, all of that uh, information from investigators, um, stalling and delaying our ability to um, combat the pandemic, 
uh, and and its influence operations in the uh, national international organizations such as the UN uh, adopting the China model. We need to um, investigate those who have been uh, collaborating with the Chinese, both in the financial markets, financial sector, uh, BlackRock, and and uh, venture capital, and State Street, and Valio, and all of the uh, all of those uh, players in in finances that are, are um, taking American money from their pension plans and investing them into. Uh, fraudulent Chinese companies. And right now, even this week, we're hearing about um, cells of Chinese men of military age who are traveling together in groups. They seem to be carrying the same packs, and they are coming up over the border. We don't know where they're coming from. They do seem to have um, good communications. They're, they're, they're traveling in groups, almost like companies coming over. So that fifth column that's coming into the United States it's incredibly concerning to me as an ordinary citizen of the United States. And Didi, you mentioned awareness. So for concerned citizens listening to this who want to know more, maybe get their own copy of the indictment, where should they go? So if they want to get a copy of the indictment, prosecuting the Communist um, Party and friends for their crimes against America, China, and the world, they can go to the indictmentbook.com, the indictmentbook.com. And you can find...